Hey everyone, my name is Lex. I am a family law attorney here in California and I run a blog called theproblemgaze.com and The Problem Gaze on Instagram. On my blog I cover all issues relating to gay dating, marriage, and divorce, including things like child adoption, surrogacy, and insemination issues as well. Um, so I have the great opportunity here in partnering with Gays with Kids, a blog and brand I really love. Um, and they've asked me to kind of walk through some of the legal steps involved in different stages of parenting, whether or not you're adopting, um, going through the surrogacy or insemination process, or if you have another unique um, gay parenting scenario. So although I am a California attorney, what I've done is kind of summarize some of the legal steps you'd have to go through uh, across the country. Um, it's going to be similar steps in every state, but adoption law does vary uh, on a state level, so you're going to want to research the particular rules in your state or consult with an attorney in your state to be sure that um, everything you're doing as far as the process for adoption is up to code. So there's a number of ways you can adopt. I'm sure you are all familiar with this, but I'll go through some of the most common routes. So you can certainly do a public adoption that's going through your state's public agency or department of social services. You can also do a private agency adoption. So there's going to be agencies that are licensed by the state and they will facilitate the entire adoption process for you. So they will help you um, find the right child for your um, home and lifestyle and go through kind of that child's needs and where that child is at as far as age. Um, and their birth parent situation and walk you through that. That is of course going to cost a lot more than a public adoption, um, which are just children who are in the welfare system. So that's kind of the difference there. There's also going to be independent adoptions. So that could be a case where perhaps you know the parents um, of the child. So it may be a relative, it may be a friend, or you independently have just found someone and maybe even online. Um, there's a number of ways to find people. So if that's the case and you have not used a public or private agency, your adoption is going to be an independent adoption. And then finally, there's even international adoptions. So these are going to be adoptions um, with specific agencies in countries that are allowed to do this process. And that's all going to be governed by um, the Hague Convention. And there's certain international rules that you need to follow if you want your international adoption to proceed smoothly. Um, so regardless of what type of adoption you're doing, public, private, independent, or international, there's going to be some similar steps you're going to have to follow um, in each of those circumstances. So what this video is going to cover is some of those common steps after you have found um, the child that's right for you and your living situation. So the first thing you're going to want to do is look up what forms are required in your court and your state. This is the part where you perhaps may want to retain an attorney in your state that's familiar with the process, but the forms are more or less going to be the same in every state. And just if I back up a little bit, just a little background on this. So adopting for gays has not always just been allowed. So just as a point for us to remember is this became legal in all 50 states. Um, gay adoptions by either a single LGBT person or a same-sex couple are now legal in all 50 states and DC as of June 2015. So keep that in mind. Sometimes the law takes a little bit to catch up as far as um, the language in certain laws, uh, but it is completely legal across the country. So that is no longer anything we have to worry about. Thank God. Um, but again, you're going to want to look to your court and see what they need you to do um, based on the process. But what they can't do is tell you no. So that's a good start. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do is go to your court and find the adoption request form. It's going to perhaps have a different title, but it's going to be more or less the same thing. This is going to be a big form with a lot of sections that really ask for everything you've done up to this point. Um, to find the child. So it's going to ask you who the parties are, uh, you, your partner, uh, if you're single, it's going to ask you your information, it's going to ask you whether or not you used a public agency, private agency, if this is independent or international adoption, it's going to walk you through all these steps and you're going to need to fill out all of that information. Um, it's also going to ask you 
uh, about the parental rights of the birth parent of this child. So depending on how you found the child, um, perhaps through an agency, the birth parent of that child may still have parental rights that the court is going to have to terminate. Um, so this form is going to ask you about that process. If you have found the child independently or perhaps internationally and the parent has already willing to terminate their uh, parental rights and has signed a form to that effect, then you're all good to go. If not, there's going to be a process through the court where maybe you don't even know where the birth parents are and you're going to have to go through a notification process. You may have to um, set up notices or contact the DMV, uh, send letters, certified letters to the parent's last known address and try to find that birth parent. Um, because the court, of course, is not just going to hand children away. They need to know who the birth parent is and what is going on with that birth parent um, and why they are not in that child's life. So that's something to consider as well. Um, the form's also just going to ask you basics about the suitability of your li living situation for the adoption. And generally, um, to adopt a child, you're going to need to be at least 10 years older than that child. Uh, again, that'll vary state to state. Once you've done that, um, there may be attachments that ask about your adoption expenses. It's going to ask you to itemize every cost you've put into this adoption. Um, that's mostly just going to be for the court records and perhaps for tax purposes. If you're looking for any type of adoption credits or things on your taxes, you'll have an official form that says everything you've spent on the adoption process. Um, once you've done that, you're going to file all these various forms with the court. And then the court is generally going to set up an interview with an investigator. So that investigator is tasked with writing a report that kind of summarizes what's going on in the child's life that you're trying to adopt, what's going on with your life and your home situation, and they're going to submit a report to the court. So this investigator may be a court employee, a court employee it may be a family therapist. Um, there's a number of professionals that do this, but whoever your investigator is, they're going to work with you and submit that report to the court. Um, once they've submitted that, then you can go back to the court and ask for a hearing date for your adoption. So that's going to be where you go in front of the, front of the judge with the child and with the other parent. Um, if you are married or in a partnership, you, both parents are going to go to the hearing. The child will be there. The judge will have the report from the investigator, and it's basically going to walk through all of your forms. He or she, rather, is basically going to walk through all of your forms and see if everything matches up, if the report is good to go. Um, and hopefully at the end of that hearing, you will be deemed the legal uh, guardian of that child. And another important aspect of that hearing is whether or not the uh, parental rights of the birth parent have terminated. So that's just the basics of the process. Again, this is going to vary in every state, but hopefully this is a good summary for you and a good starting point for your research. Um, certainly, if you have more questions, definitely let me know. My information is embedded in this article, um, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.